be like a repeated day for me, repeated weekend. I'll get drunk, I'll wake up, hungover, and have a laugh about it. Three weeks later, I woke up in hospital and they said, Kwa, you've lost your legs. It is an overused word, but there is no other way to describe Kwa Nam Tran. He is simply inspiring. Known as the guy with two robot legs and an infectious smile, Kwa was always destined for greatness. His overt laughter, classic one-liners and love of life gained him much popularity growing up. But his path to success has not been easy, but he takes each day quite literally one step at a time. When I was a child, I had the vision of marrying a girl, having kids, living in a white picket fence. In hindsight, I wouldn't want to be living in a white picket fence because I like blue. A blue picket fence would be better. After both his parents fled Vietnam in their 20s because of the war, Qua was born in France on the 11th of March 1983. His family moved to Australia to join extended family when Qua was just two years old. After five years of hopping around, Qua and his family began a new life in the southwestern Sydney suburb of Cabramatta. Extremely family orientated, Qua has been there ever since experiencing the highs and lows of childhood and adulthood. I had my first drink possibly at the year 12 formal and from there it snowboarded. It snowboarded in the sense that it was my escapism. If we went to a bar or to a friend's house, I would either buy a bottle or make sure there's a bottle at that venue, at that place, at that house. Because I knew that that's what gets the party going. At that moment, alcohol brings us together. December 2012, it was summer. And it'll be like a repeated day for me, repeated weekend. I'll get drunk, I'll wake up, hungover, and have a laugh about it talking to friends and saying, what happened? In this case, three weeks later, woke up in hospital and I saw my mum and brother. I didn't know why it happened, but they looked at me and they said, Kwa, you've lost your legs. I just palmed it off. Everything was okay. I, I was doing my world at that time, meaning I still felt my legs. A couple days later, while I was doing ICU, I wanted to use the bathroom. I shuffled to the side of the raised bed. I was now underground. The nurses ran in and said, what are you doing? I wanted to use the bathroom, but you can't. That was that realisation. I did lose my legs. I was involved in a high-speed car accident. 150 kilometres into a telegraph pole. Resulting in the life of the front passenger. And the driver suffered severe head injuries. I found out that I was the rear passenger and that it was a solo car accident. I was the lucky one in an unfortunate scenario. I've lost my legs, but it's only legs. Kwa's family was always close knit. He had grown up in a small, humble home with his mother, father, older half-sister, older sister, and younger brother. 
received a phone call from my brother, Tio, um, who said that choir had been in an accident and, you know, uh, he was heading to the hospital. And I was like, oh, okay. Just thinking that it was just, you know, a little uh, normal prank sort of thing. I started making my way to the hospital as well. The doctors came out and said to us, particularly we were uh, to prepare ourselves um, to say goodbye to him. Yeah, you're riding through the shock of it. So uh, it's hard to process at the time. Coming to terms with him losing his legs, like on our side as a family, I think um, it was fine. It wasn't a problem. You know, we just had to adjust to that. But as long as we had him, I, th I think that was the most important thing. No, he's an amazing person. For him to be able to recover in less than a year and to be able to walk just shows you what kind of person he is in terms of his outlook and his mental state. I look up to him, but I'm, I'm his older sister, you know? So, yeah, it's good. Older, one does not expect to learn how to walk again. In my case, I had to learn like a baby learns how to walk. It was frustrating at times, but it was at the best of times. Yep, so just, that's it, just hold it. Every so step just, I took, it's filming now. I was grinning. It was an achievement. I know it was a slow process, and I was prepared for a slow process, but I knew that with repetition, I'll get there. Most bilateral amputees are wheelchair dependent within about 12 to 18 months post injury. Um, he was very determined that that would not happen. Um, we had a few setbacks with skin problems, so that was affecting the fitting of the prosthetics, which meant he was getting skin wounds from the pressure. So we wanted to try and find a way to avoid that if possible. I heard about um, a a surgical option of osseointegration. Without that surgery, Qua wouldn't be doing what he's doing now. Associate Professor Manjed Al Madiras is an orthopaedic surgeon and the world leader in osseointegration. He's a human rights activist, international speaker, and published author. He is referred to as the Henry Ford of Aussie integration. He has revolutionised the technique and opened it up to a wider population of amputees. Aussie integration technology is completely um, revolutionary where it bypasses the soft tissue and it involves insertion, uh, insertion of the um, high tensile strength titanium implant into the residual skeleton and um, connecting that to um, a prosthetic uh, limb most likely robotic leg um, through a small opening in the skin um, and then hooking up the nerves and the muscles in a way to operate a myelectric prosthesis. What experience of assessing people from the number of people that I've seen and, uh, and I could tell from the day I saw Kwa that uh, he would do well because he has the right attitude, he has the right approach to life and people like him deserve to get better and usually uh, you would know that uh, he would excel in his rehabilitation because he think very positive, he think glass half full and, um, and nothing would stop him from uh, improving and, and getting better. It only took me a couple of days later until I realised why, why do I need to be in a state where I don't need to be? I don't need to be in that negative state. I know what had happened, so what do I do about it? How can I pick myself back up? Do I choose myself to be in that position where...
after. If I don't drink, what can I do? Why not start something that I love? And that passion is the gym. And I had the opportunity with my business partners to purchase a gym, and I did. And it's just like a love story. It ended happily ever after. And when Kwa isn't in the gym, he's doing something no one ever quite expected. Car racing. That looms over everyone's head. Why would you want to get into a speeding car when you were a speeding car caused you this? But I say, if if I was to be afraid of everything, I wouldn't be here. I'll be cocooned in a little dark room, bawling my eyes out. If I didn't get behind the wheel, then I would say the accident would have an upper hand. But because I chose to get my license, chose to drive, chose to bring myself onto the track, I truly believe that that made me set my own terms, not not what the accident has caused me with missing legs. I still remember being on the gurney while I'm trying to save my life, and and my parents and my older brother Scott off to the side. I can see them over here in the in the head um, by the curtain. It's still been a hidden community. Even as I grew up, people didn't understand amputation. They still don't understand it today. You don't know about it until it happens to you or someone very close to you. Nothing prepares you. Even our medical education system doesn't explain amputation and the side effects for those who live with it. And we're the experts. But if we can't communicate and share that knowledge, everybody who's going to go through amputation will start at ground zero again and not be prepared for it. Quara is a volunteer in the organisation. He's a lovely guy. He gets out and he's quite happy to help other people. The biggest positives come out of helping each other to achieve some sort of outcome, being there, being present, sharing information, sharing feelings, sharing outcomes. Staying positive is about recognising that amputation is traditionally the result of a life-threatening circumstance and it's a second chance. If you didn't get that chance of amputation, you wouldn't be here. My journey right now is to inspire people to help people get out of their low state to help people discover themselves and i feel like i'm the embodiment of someone who has been through adversity only to climb out of that dark tunnel to stand tall on top and know that anything is possible. I am here at the ARM studios for the KISS 106.5. I'm here for Kyla and Jackie O's segment. What segment that is? Find out. So obviously if you walk in live, Kyle's gonna be like, what? What's going on? Like because he'll notice straight away. I guess you get when you see, see some couples, oh, they're, they're too young, you know, holding their hands, kissing, or something. Yeah. <laughs> I see you hang like pump, like PDA. Um, over, over you. Yeah, yeah. Cool, do you want to just talk to that height, just so we can get a level? Hello, hello, hello. Perfect. Cool, so first one. I don't drink and I don't smoke or do drugs, so you can't either. Perfect. Next one. I love pussy. And I have seven cats. <laughs> cool. Sometimes I get recognised in the street. I've been on reality TV. Across Sydney no. and around the world. <laughs> world famous Island. Jackie O. Shine.
We have Koa joining us in studio, a lovely man for the ladies. Oh, Ten I love ladies that name. lined up. Koa, like, hey, buddy, good hey. morning. What's up? How are you, my friend? <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Now, so, how did you lose your legs? So, I was involved in a car accident almost eight years ago. Wow. And wow. You, both legs were removed? Yeah. Or so chopped I, off? I was, I was blind drunk. So, all I knew is that I woke up on Boxing Day. Yeah. And without any legs. Oh, so my that was a surprise, God. yeah. Well, shit, yeah, that's more than a surprise. That's <laughs> you a passenger? In I the was the rear passenger. I was oh the rear passenger. Oh, my wow. God. Was the person driving, had they been drinking? Yeah, uh, I assume so, but unfortunately, the front passenger died. And oh, and no. no. It was a horrific got, accident. Yeah, and the driver suffered severe head injuries. Oh, and you so lost your do legs. you think that's where the no drinking comes from now? Yeah, because I used to be a person who used to love drinking. Like, I'll I'll get blind drunk every weekend. Really? Right, and that and after yeah. that you uh, stopped. Yeah, that's correct. After that, I just realised, you know what? I I don't need this anymore. I've made the conscious choice to not drink, and it was a choice that I've made because of what had happened. It's not because I can't drink, it's because I chose not to live that lifestyle anymore. I see the joy in talking to people. I see the joy in remembering people's faces without being on the piss. So my whole perspective of fun has changed dramatically. Welcome to Taboo, a show about laughing with people you really shouldn't be laughing at. I've invited these four people with a disability away for a holiday. We'll be talking about things you probably don't want us to be talking about, and we'll be laughing at things you really don't want us to be laughing at. When he isn't taking his message to radio, Kwa is taking it to TV. On the Channel 10 show, Taboo, which is all about normalising disability. It was... It was alright. I had to face... I had to face it. I had to make sure that I was fine with it. I didn't want to hold any grudge against him. Sure. Yeah. I just needed to move on. It would be a very difficult thing to not have um, a feeling of blame. Yes. So you haven't felt anger towards him? No. Or maybe at the start. Yeah. But I didn't want to hold that. Sure. I didn't want to hold that burden with me. He's just an incredibly positive guy. Uh, there was a, there was a sort of a subject in um, matter in there about um, uh, inspiration porn, you know, as in um, these people in chairs they're so inspirational, but that's not actually the case. Um, not always. It's not a given that you're going to have something horrible happen to you and you become an inspiration. Um, you might just be an asshole. The emotion to have for somebody that essentially um, I only met for four days while there was TV cameras rolling. Um, I've continued to have interactions with him, but I'm really proud of him. I just, I just think, I think he's a, t- and, and and again, it's it's regardless of the disability. I think he's doing great things. I think you know he's identified that for him, um, uh, fitness and gyms were a really positive place. So he uh, invested his time and money and effort in that so that he could invest back in other people. And uh, I think it's a good lesson for anyone: find what it is you love, um, and pour yourself into it. Taboo was a huge hit in Australia. The episode alone attracted thousands of viewers. Unbeknown to Kwa, one of those viewers was the first responder who saved his life. It's been eight years since the accident and Kwa has never, ever met Sean. Until now. Oh, wow, oh, wow. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Look at this. Huh? That's a fine for a face. Wow, yeah, I'm in a girl face. Oh, you're in a pretty big state there. Oh, yeah. I've yeah. got so much questions, though. Yeah, I bet, I bet. It's amazing. Unreal. Look at this. Yeah. Look at that. Getting these, these legs that were left out. So what have you lost? You lost below your knee. Yeah, below and above the knee. So, yeah, like... Wow. Thank you so much. Oh, mate. You saved my life. Well, wow. it was a big, it was a big job. Yeah. It was a miracle what, you know, how, how you came through that window. It was, that saved your life. How, how yeah. the window, well, the window from the, behind the passenger door. 
So that little quarter window, yeah, 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 yeah. because your head went through that window, that saved your life. Oh, wow. Because you got the curl across, you know, across your chest that was... Oh, wow. Yeah. I've never used every tool I've ever had in that expectation. It was incredible. But yeah, look here. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's incredible. It's incredible. Amazing. Feeling the missing puzzles. Yeah. What questions have you got? Yeah, I don't remember three weeks. So we were in that period. It was a blank state, blank cast canvas. So I woke up with that missing three weeks, which is... In hindsight, it's a good thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. like because I don't, don't remember anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just to hear your recollection of what what happened. Oh, yeah. It's incredible to see. <laughs> to see you here is just amazing. I'm glad you found it. Oh, I used every tool. Every, <laughs> uh, every tool I've got. I've never used so many tools, you know. And you're and screaming at me, going, "Get me out!" Yeah. I'm like, "Mate, I'm trying." <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. You were talking, yeah. They, oh, they wow. subdued when you first when we first got there. You were you're in a bit of pain, but the ambos, the ambos are incredible. The ambos are amazing. If I could go back and change. I would have chose not to change anything because I know that's my story and I am happy as I am now. There's nothing I would like to change because I know that everything happens for a reason and my journey was to go through these tough times I need to recover from it then I could use that to help other people in their tough times Whatever you think you're going through that you think feels like it's the end of the world it's not When you feel like you're at the bottom of the barrel there's only one way and it's up it's where you pick yourself back up even if it's a journey that that might be tough at times but if you be consistent and look on the positive side of things then I say you will stand above the rest if you look at the positives if you look at the brighter side of stuff then you'll be standing tall on your own terms <laughs>